Hey guys and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to do, finally do, a review of the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus. The one thing that always jumps out at me when they're running these shoes is smooth. They just feel so smooth. Feels like your gait just glides along. That lovely feedback sensation from the foam feels great. Um, aggressive enough when you want to pick up the pace, but feels good at a multitude of paces terrains i've done 5k races in these shoes i've done long marathon type efforts in like sort of 10 mile tempo runs everything um i've had this shoe now for quite a while and i've racked up i think over almost 180 miles in this shoe but today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at uh the, as always the tech specs first um, then we're going to look at the fit of the shoe, uh, we're going to look at the ride of the shoe, we're going to talk about some of my pros and cons of this shoe, and then if you stick around to the end, uh, we're going to do a quick fire versus on some of these shoes up here, including the Adios Pro 2, uh, the Socking Endorphin Pro 3, and the Alpha Fly, just for which shoe I would pick for a race. If you are enjoying this video today um, and you are enjoying running, then please make sure you subscribe to this channel for all your running related content. We do gear review, we do training tips, workout vlogs, race vlogs, stretching routines, all those kind of things. Anything a runner might need, you can find on this channel. So if you enjoy that kind of stuff, which of course you do, hit that subscribe here. And if you're enjoying this video today, then please make sure you hit that like. And even more so, if you think that I need a haircut, then hit that like as well, because I am so overdue a haircut 180 miles i know this shoe inside and out so without any further ado let's get on with it we're going to talk about the specs first see it is a maximal cushion shoe with uh 39 millimeters of stack in the back and 34 in the forefoot which gives you a five millimeter drop which is something that i've really been enjoying but we'll get into that later in terms of weight on the website this is stated to be 204 grams now in my size which is a 10 and a half uk coming in at 232 and 234 uh, between the left and right. Really light shoe. Um, it's not quite as light as a Vaporfly Next Percent 2, but it's almost there. Um, and it does just feel really, really light on foot. We do have a carbon plate that runs along here. Now what's changed from version one, the ASICS Metaspeed Sky 1, to this version is the geometry of that plate. Um, so this plate now sits more so in the middle um, and is actually a lot flatter. So it sort of kind of does like this kind of thing and then goes up a little bit at the end. Um, it's not as aggressive as that in the Metaspeed Edge Plus or as even in the original Metaspeed Sky. The shoe is supposedly designed for a stride runner. Now, without trying to get too scientific and get into too much details of what that means, basically ASICs are saying, as runners, there are two ways that we can get faster. We can either increase our stride length, which is obviously the distance that we cover as we are running, or we can increase our cadence, which is the amount of steps that we take as we are running. Now, obviously these will go up and down depending on your pace anyway. These two specific types of shoes will work best for which type of runner you are. So the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus was designed for stride runners, which I know for a fact I definitely am. And then ASICS Metaspeed Edge Plus was designed for cadence runners, which if you've seen my review um, on this channel, which you can check out here after this video, of course, you will see that it just didn't really work for me. It's more about covering a further amount of distance rather than being very aggressive um, and springing you forward. You get a nice lockdown from the upper here, um, a nice bit of support around the heel cup here. The uh, tongue itself provides just enough support there 
um, well, not support, there's enough pad in there that the laces don't dig into you. You can get a really, really, really good lockdown on this shoe without having to do too much at all. Me, personally, this uh, doesn't fit true to size. Now, I think most places where you can buy this, it's said that this is a unisex shoe. Um, and I have found that I've had to go half a size down from my normal sort of like Nike sizing to get a good fit in this shoe. Um, so I'm normally a size 11 UK and I've gone 10 and a half UK in this and you know to always take this how you will because everybody likes a different amount of room in the toe box their feet are a different shape just my opinion of it I find that as a in a 10.5 in this shoe it fits me absolutely perfectly which will obviously lead me to say that I don't think it necessarily runs true to size at least in a men's UK size I just think it's a little bit longer in the toe box than and the most shoes are in a size um, 11. Really nice upper here that is really, really breathable, although it doesn't look like it will be, it is, but provides a nice amount of sort of like stability and sort of, it holds your foot in there nicely without feeling too restrictive. And just the whole upper itself is really, really good at keeping your foot in one place foam turbo foam that we've got there this does really give you a bouncy ride not bouncy like the vapor fly which does feel a bit more aggressive it's it's sort of like a it, it it's hard to explain really without running in it but it just kind of it makes you glide along for me as a stride running it makes you able to just glide along as you're running um, it definitely is a stride suited shoe. It's not as aggressive. It doesn't feel super aggressive, but you can feel that plate in there. And it does really help when you're just sort of sticking on with one sort of pace. Although I have taken this pace, uh, this shoe, all different kind of paces. I've done a 5K run in this where I did about 17 and a half uh, minutes. I've done hard aggressive intervals in this shoe, that sort of four minute mile pace. I've done marathon efforts, I've done half marathon efforts, I've done everything. So I've got an extremely knowledgeable view of this uh, or uh, information base of this shoe in terms of ride. And it's just one of my favorite sensation rides. It really, really is. Um, it's not too aggressive. It's definitely aggressive enough or sort of responsive enough that it gives you that sort of edge in a race or it gives you that edge through training. You can feel the plate working combined with the foam, the geometry there of the plate, all working nicely together to just give you that responsive but also bouncy ride. The foam itself, the uh, the Flight Foam Turbo, which I always struggle with saying but I managed to get out there, it, again, it's not as soft as in the Vaporfly. Really nice feedback. It just feels nice. It feels like it's working. Um, and like I say, yeah, it's, it's a bouncy kind of not too mushy ride. Um, it also gives you a lot of stability because of that. So we've got a wired platform here, um, which does give you a nice naturally stable ride. And also um, added with the sort of makeup of the foam there, the midsole. Again, that provides extra stability there that this just really does feel super stable. We've now got a wider base than in the original over there, which provides even more stability. What has changed probably more mostly, obviously from that version there, is the aggressiveness. This is a little bit less aggressive than the Asics Metabede Sky, because obviously the plate is not as aggressive, but I do find that that helps more so when you're keeping a continued pace. This probably does work better over a marathon or a half marathon than um, the original version, although maybe the original version is probably still slightly faster over a 5K if you prefer that aggressive type of feeling. Although the more I run in this shoe, the more I'm enjoying the fact that this does allow me to open up my stride, it does feel nice and bouncy, and it does just let me glide along. Pros for me in this shoe is the the foam itself and that sort of geometry of the plate. Again, I'm not going to go into it over and over and over, but it just really, really works for me. The way that the geometry of the plate is set up combined with the foam, it allows me to run how I want to run. I don't ever have to fight this shoe. It just wants me to do what I naturally want to do, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Uh, in terms of traction, with the rubber that we've got on the outsole here, it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, wet, you know, pavement, gravel, trails, anything like that, this grip is absolutely brilliant. It just really is sort of like tacky, 
um, and just really grippy. It is really, really grippy. It provides great grip. Like I say, in terms of versatility of the shoe, there's another pro of this shoe in that you can just do anything in it. I've done easy runs in this shoe, hard runs, long runs, really fast intervals. I've done trail races, everything. I've done everything in this shoe and I just find it probably one of my most versatile shoes. You can do easy runs in this shoe without it feeling too aggressive, but then at the same time you can smash it in 200 meter intervals where you go in three and a half minute mile pace, which I have done in this shoe with it feeling perfect. So yeah, the versatility of this shoe is another really, really good factor. Yeah, else that I think they've got really good in this shoe is the heel lockdown. Um, it just works really, really well for me. They've upgraded it a little bit from the first version. It's now a little bit more comfortable. I found the first version to be quite coarse in here, uh, in the heel area, but that works perfectly. The tongue provides just the right amount of padding and the laces are a perfect length and allow you just to sort of, with that ribbed laces here, they allow you to get a nice sort of knot done and then it doesn't come undone. There are a few cons, um, which we're gonna talk about now, is and that is mainly the price. So these shoes are coming in at £225, which is obviously quite expensive for um, any shoe. Although I suppose these days it's uh, it's now cheaper than the Alpha Fly, it's cheaper than the Alpha Fly 2. Um, it's about the same sort of price as the Vaporfly Next Percent. I mean, it's still a lot of money, but it's definitely worth it. Um, and I will just say, a little spoiler alert for those that have made it this far, always check out Keller Sports. Now, I'm not sponsored by Keller Sports, so don't send me anything like that. But if you sign up to their membership thing, uh, which is, I believe, like £8 a year, you can always find awesome super shoes on there for a really cheap discount so yeah i think the this that's where i got these with about 40 pound off the con for me is the outsole uh, durability now i do have to be honest and say that it hasn't been getting much worse than this and it hasn't caused me any issues running wise but a lot of this wear that you can see here was visible after two runs in this shoe. Especially in this sort of area here, I'm worried that if it keeps getting too wet, it might open up a little bit more, which touch wood it hasn't so far. Um, but yeah, you know, that it, I guess you could say it's just cosmetic, but there is definitely the potential there for it to cause an issue. Probably not going to find this aggressive as the original Metaspeed Sky, um, and definitely not as aggressive as the Edge Plus, not as aggressive as the Vaporfly, Probably a, a similar sort of sensation to the Alpha Fly. Um, it's just like I say, it depends on how you like to run and depends on what works for you. So, but yeah, drawback is you may not find it quite aggressive enough for a 5K. Although, like I said, I've done a 17 and a half minute 5K in this shoe and it still felt absolutely brilliant at that, play, uh, that pace. Biggest, the biggest downside for me in this shoe and something that other people may not find an issue, but I certainly have in both of these shoes, is the insole. Now, you might see here, if you recognise this shoe, that this is not the insole that comes with the shoe. And that is because I just find the insole in both this one and the original version far too coarse. Really, really coarse. Um, some people don't might not find it an issue. For me, it caused massive blisters in the original, and it did cause some rubbing in the first few runs in this. Um, to fix it in the original, I added an extra insole because I thought the shoe was a little bit too big because I didn't go 10 and a half then. I went 11, um, so it actually gave me a better fit on the shoe. But in this shoe, straight away, what I did was I removed the insole um, and put my Reebok Float Ride 3 insole in, which is the comfiest in insole for me. That's added the tiniest bit of extra weight. We're talking probably two grams extra on the shoe. That's one of my biggest bugbears these days, is racing shoes having these insoles that are just made of nothing. I really, really, really wish they would stop it. Please stop it. I would much rather a shoe weigh about two, three grams more and be comfortable on my inside, uh, on the bottom of my feet. I don't want to be doing a race and getting blisters or feeling like, oh yes, I love this shoe, but I can't use it because it's giving me issues. Um, so you might want to do the same. It was really, really difficult to do um, because it's glued down, really glued down, but I did do it. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. As I promised, we're going to do a quick fire round on this shoe 
versus some of the shoes in the background. Adios Pro 2. Now for any race, I would 100% pick the Asics Metabi Sky Plus over the Adios Pro 2. And that's mainly because of the issues that I have with this shoe in terms of the stability. With the slanted beveled heel and the cutouts here, I find this shoe to be so unstable. And although I love the sensation of the foam, it always causes me issues. And so I very rarely use this shoe anymore. The Asics Metaspeed Sky Plus wins by miles. This is the Asics Metaspeed sky original now after my first few runs in this shoe i preferred this shoe by absolute miles and just thought oh my goodness what have you done to this shoe but now i've changed my mind massively i still enjoy both of these shoes but for any sort of race over a 5k i would 100 percent use asics metaspeed sky plus it just works better for my gait cycle i don't need the shoe to be as aggressive at those 10k half marathon paces that being said, this shoe is probably a little bit favourable over a 5k race, although I don't think there's much in it, versus the Alpha Fly. So this is definitely a very, very tough one, because although this shoe always performs really, really well for me, I do get some issues in this shoe after using it, some blisters. I've had the AirPods burst in this shoe when using it. I don't find it as comfortable. Um, again, similar, I've had to add, in this one I've actually had, a, had an extra insole. It's probably a little bit more responsive than the Asics Metaspeed Sky, but I do think moving forward that I'm going to probably be using this shoe more than this shoe in races, just because it just feels more comfortable and I don't sort of get any injuries or issues with the shoe afterwards in terms of blisters or sore feet, which I do get in this. I do think, though, in terms of out-and-out -out speed, that this is faster. So if I was really, really worried about hitting a PB, then I probably would race in this. But, you know, from an overall shoe standpoint, it definitely wins. So, guys, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Uh, we've gone into a lots of detail today about the Asics Metaspeed Sky Plus with some uh, head-to-heads there. If you have enjoyed this video today, then please, once again, make sure you hit that like. Uh, and you subscribe to the channel for all your running related content. In the description below, I've included some products that I always use as a runner. There's nothing I would ever recommend that I don't use myself. You can find there uh, the recovery massage gun, the energy gummies that I use for races and some other things like that. As always, guys, I've been Running Man Sam. This has been a super duper shoe review and I'll see you guys in a bit.